Digital Photography Part 1 Introduction to Digital SLR or DSLR Cameras What is a Digital SLR or DSLR Camera? Put simply, it is a digital camera that incorporates single lens reflex mechanism. SLR technology gives the photographer through the lens viewing of the subject before the picture is taken. This is accomplished by a reflex mirror and a pentaprism mirror found in SLR cameras. The pentaprism is a five-sided prism that deviates light by 90 degrees. The light reflects inside the prism twice and exits the prism 90 degrees from the first point of entry. Digital single lens reflex cameras are the most common type of camera used by professional photographers. Other types include point and shoot, as well as the latest mirrorless cameras. SLR cameras were first introduced in 1884, but the advancement in technology did not catch up with the concept until the 1960s, when it became the preferred design for cameras. SLR film cameras were largely replaced by digital SLRs in the 2000s. Today's advanced digital SLR cameras clearly have more advantages over the SLR film cameras of yesterday, but some still find film cameras desirable from an artistic point of view and the habit of a time-consuming process. Digital advantages include not having to purchase film, no wasting of time in film developing, instant viewing of photos, the ability to take thousands of pictures without changing the memory card, raw image technology, in-camera processing of various features. Time is money and digital technology saves you a ton of time. Why would you not go digital? As far as film resolution compared to digital resolution, this has been a long debated topic and I cannot say what is better. All I can say is digital resolution is awesome. So, how does a digital SLR work? First, light travels through the detachable lens. The light hits the reflex mirror and reflects up into the pentaprism. The pentaprism deviates the light 90 degrees out to the viewfinder. The photographer then has a through the lens view of the subject. Notice the reflex mirror is in the down position. When the shutter button is pressed to take a picture, the reflex mirror pivots upward and the shutter opens for the duration of the shutter speed setting allowing light or the image to fall on the sensor. The image is captured by the sensor and an image file is generated and written to the camera's memory card. This file is usually in a JPEG format or a RAW file format. RAW files are sort of like a digital negative. You can take a RAW file and make changes to them in post with software to get the final picture. This is where the creativity comes out in digital photography. Adobe Lightroom is a popular software application to organize and process raw images. Here is another look when the reflex mirror pivots up and the shutter opens. Here are some common characteristics of digital SLR cameras. What you see in front of you are two examples of digital SLR cameras and they are fairly large and digital SLR cameras are typically larger than mirrorless or point-and-shoot cameras. What I have here is a point-and-shoot camera. It's about the standard size of a point-and-shoot or medium size. As you can tell it's fairly small. Number two Digital SLRs have a hump on top of the camera behind the built-in pop-up flash. This is the pentaprism. For example, I have the Canon 7D here. And if you notice, there is a hump right here on the camera. This is very typical and very common of digital SLR cameras. This particular camera has a pop-up flash and notice behind the flash this is the raised area and that's where the pentaprism is located 
and you'll see this on all SLR cameras. Number three, more high-end cameras, being full-frame cameras, do not have built-in pop-up flashes. Here is a 5D Mark III from Canon. As you can see here, here is the hump, the typical uh, hump, but there is no pop-up flash. And the pentaprism is in this area here. Number four, full-frame DSLR cameras have image sensors that are equivalent in size to the framing size of film cameras, at least 35 millimeter. Full-frame cameras produce the best quality picture with low noise when compared to crop sensor digital cameras, such as APS-C type. This Canon 7D is a crop sensor camera and uses an APS-C type sensor. APS-C stands for Advanced Photo System Type C Sensor, which is smaller than full frame sensors and are widely used in DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras. Number six, cameras with sensor sizes less than full frame is considered a crop sensor camera. So this 7D is a crop sensor camera. This 5D Mark III here is a full frame camera and has a sensor at least 35 millimeter. Number seven, when using a crop sensor DSLR, it has a smaller sensor when compared to full frame. Therefore, it adds a magnification factor to the actual lens focal length. This factor is either 1.5 times or 1.6 times. You can search online for the crop factor of your camera. Number eight, if you are using a full frame camera such as this uh, 5D Mark III that I have here on the right, with a 50 millimeter lens, the camera's focal length will be 50 millimeters. If you are using a crop sensor camera such as the Canon 7D here on the left, it has a crop sensor factor of 1.6. So when using a 50 millimeter lens on the 7D, it will give you a focal length of 1.6 times 50, which gives you a focal length of 80 millimeters. Number nine. So when using crop sensor DSLRs, it will add zoom to your lenses and take away wide angle capability. Number 10. The lenses are detachable on digital SLR bodies. This gives the photographer the ability to change lenses depending on the type of shot they want to make. Number 11. A standard flash hot shoe mount is available on top of digital SLR cameras, usually on top of the pentaprism area. And this is where the hot shoe is located. This is actually a speed light, which is a flash unit and it can be attached to the camera like this. Number 12, digital SLRs usually have a mode select dial on top of the camera. For example, on the 7D, here's the mode select dial. On the 5D Mark III, it's located here and there's a little safety button here in which you have to depress before you can select the mode. Number 13, modern day digital SLRs have built in light meters for through the lens metering, TTL metering. Number 14, modern day digital SLRs also have a quarter inch threaded hole on the bottom of the camera for mounting to a tripod as you can see here. And that's it for the introduction to the digital SLR camera. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe so you don't miss part two when I talk about the exposure triangle and how to use different shooting modes such as aperture priority and shutter priority. Part three will be about program mode and manual mode. 
Thanks for watching.